Hello everyone. In the last lecture, we started with the definition of left and right cosets of a subgroup in a group. We also saw two examples, one for left cosets, one for right cosets. In one I took the group operation as multiplication, in one I took the group operation as addition, in one I took the group to be finite, in one I took the group to be infinite. So just with two examples, we saw plenty of combinations. And then at the end, I also defined index of a subgroup, which is simply the number of distinct left cosets of H and G or number of distinct right cosets of H and G. Since this number is the same for left and right cosets, it does not matter whether you take left cosets or right cosets. So let's quickly recall the definition of a coset uh, and then we will start with our properties. So we had said, let H be a subgroup of a group G and A be an element of G. Then the set AH which is obtained by multiplying every element in the subgroup from the left by the element A is called a left coset of H in G. And instead of multiplying from the left, if you multiply from the right, you get what is called as a right coset. So there are two ways of looking at a left coset. Either you multiply every element in the subgroup H from the left by the element A or just keep in mind that every element in this set has to look like a product of two elements where the first element has to be A and the second element could be anything so long as it lies in H. So every element in the left coset AH looks like a product of two elements where the first element is A and second element is any element of the subgroup capital H. Okay. With this definition in mind, let's prove a few properties. The first one that we are going to prove is, let H be a subgroup of a group G and E be identity in G. Then, if we multiply every element in the subgroup from the left by the identity, that means we look at the left coset EH, then it will be the same as the subgroup H. And that's easy to prove. Because look at the definition of EH. Every element in this set looks like a product of two elements where first element has to be E, second element has to be from H. Or we multiply every element of the subgroup from the left by the element E. And if we multiply with the identity either from the left or from the right, we are going to get back the same element. So E into H will remain H only and therefore I will get back the elements of the set H. So the left coset EH is the same as H. Please keep in mind that whatever properties I will prove, I will prove all of them uniformly for left cosets, but they are also true for right cosets. So a very good exercise will be after every property that I prove for left cosets, pause the video and you prove the corresponding property for right cosets. So for instance over here, the corresponding property for right cosets would be HE is also the same as H. So, pause your video, prove this and then go to the next theorem. So, we look at theorem 2. Let again H be any subgroup of a group G and A be any element of the group. Then, we will prove that A surely belongs to its own left coset. So this, by the way, tells us that the left coset can never be empty. It will at least contain the representative A, if not anything else. So this again is a very, very easy result to prove. You just have to look at the definition of the left coset AH. It is A into H, where H belongs to H. 
सो वी हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई एवरी एलिमेंट ऑफ द सब ग्रुप फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट बाय द एलिमेंट ए और एवरी एलिमेंट इन दिस सेट लुक्स लाइक अ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ टू एलिमेंट्स वेयर द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट इज नेसेसरीली ए एंड द सेकंड एलिमेंट इज एनीथिंग एनी एलिमेंट फ्रॉम दिस सेट सो आई नाउ विश टू प्रूव दैट द एलिमेंट ए लाइज ओवर हियर सो रिमेंबर एच इज अ सब ग्रुप बिकॉज एच इज अ सब ग्रुप Identity must definitely lie inside H. So, if you look at the product A times E, this is a product of two elements where the first element is A and second element is coming from H. So, by definition, this product has to belong to the left coset A H. It looks like a product of two elements where the first element in the product is A and second element comes from H. so this product lies in this set but then this product is the same as a so a will belong to ah so at least that representative a which is giving rise to this left coset will belong to the left coset so no left coset is ever going to be empty every left coset has to be non empty okay prove the same result for right cosets so you can try and prove that a also belongs to the right coset ha okay and now we will prove the next theorem again let h be a subgroup of a group g and a be an element of g then a will be an element of the subgroup if and only if the left coset that we have got from a is the same as the subgroup so we will prove that if a lies inside the subgroup so it is like this this is our group this is our subgroup if i pick an element a from here from inside h and i look at the left coset a h then i'll get back the subgroup h and if i take an element from somewhere outside then the left coset will not be equal to h so this is an if and only if result and therefore as usual we are going to break up the proof into two parts so in part 1 my assumption is going to be that the element a lies inside h so for the first part let me assume that this is true a lies inside the subgroup and i wish to prove that this left coset is equal to this at the end of the day they are sets and uh, the best method uh, rather one of the techniques or one of the most important techniques to prove that two sets are equal is to show that each one is a subset of the other so let's try and prove that this set is a subset of this and then we'll prove that this set is also a subset of this so let us take any element on the left hand side let x belong to this set the left coset then x must look like an element of this coset and what does any element of this coset look like it has to be a product of two elements so this element is going to look like a times h for some element h in capital h it will be a product of two elements where the first element has to be a and the second element has to be from this set so this is what x will look like but now look at our assumption our assumption says that this element is inside h and this element is already in h h is a subgroup so by closure property this product will lie inside h a is in h by assumption h is in h and h is a group it's a subgroup so it's a group on its own so this product by closure property will lie inside h and that means x lies inside h so every element of the left coset also lies inside the subgroup and therefore the left coset is a subset of h now let's look at the reverse inclusion so next let us take any element y in h now one has to cleverly uh, adjust this element so that it looks like an element of h remember i am now trying to prove that h is a subset of h 
So I am going to take any element in H and I am going to prove that it also belongs to this set. So it will have to look like a product of two elements. So well, I will write Y as E times Y. E can be introduced anywhere. And then I can write this as A times A inverse Y. I'm not being too particular about putting brackets because it is associative. And now I can write this as A times A inverse Y. Well, at least I have managed to accomplish the first step. I have written this element as a product of two elements. Where the first element is A, that is what I wanted. I wanted to write this as a product of two elements, but the first element is A. And second element has to be inside H. So the only thing that I really need to do to wind up this part of the proof is to show that this element is inside H. But one can actually do it orally. Look at the element A. A is in H, Y is in H, H is a subgroup. So by a combination of closure and inverse properties, A times Y inverse, well, sorry, A inverse times Y will also belong to H. So I have written Y as a product of two elements. First element is A and second element belongs to H. So I can say that this element Y belongs to the left coset or H is a subset of AH. So both sets are subsets of each other and therefore they have got to be equal. We will now look at the reverse inclusion. So part 2, let AH be the same as H. So suppose I know that a particular left coset is the same as H. Now in this part I want to prove that A lies inside H. But that is really the easy part. Use theorem 2 which we have already proved. Theorem 2 tells us that the element A always belongs to its own left coset. A lies inside this. And if this set is the same as this, when an element belongs to this set, it will automatically belong to this set. So this tells us that A belongs to H. Okay. We look at the next. We look at the next result. Here again. So we look at the next result. Let H be a subgroup of a group G and A and B be two elements of the group. Then we shall prove that A belongs to BH if and only if AH is the same as BH. So we will prove that if an element lies in the coset of some other element, then the coset generated by this element has to be the same as the coset generated by that and the converse also works. So once again it's an if and only if result. Let us break up the proof in two parts. Part 1. Assumption is the element A lies in the coset BH. So we are assuming that A lies inside BH and we wish to prove that these two cosets are equal. So once again we will use the same technique. We will show that each of these is a subset of the other. But before we do that, let's see what we can derive from this. If A lies in this coset, A is going to look like a product of two elements. Because it is in this coset, the first element will have to be B and second element will have to be H, where H can be anything in the subgroup H. We can also rewrite this as if I post multiply both sides by H inverse. If I post multiply both sides by H inverse, you can work out the details. We will get A H inverse equal to P. Let's call this as equation 2 and leave it aside. So with these two equations we are now set to prove this equality. So let's start with an element on the left hand side. Let x lie inside AH. 
So x will have to look like a times h dash. Now let's not use the same edge because we are talking about an arbitrary element. So it will look like a product where the first element is a, second element could be anything from this subgroup. So now let us substitute for a from this equation. So from equation 1 we will get b h h dash which can be written as b times h into h dash. So x has been written as a product of two elements. First element is b and look at the second element. Second element is this in the product, in the bracket. So h and h, it is h into h dash but h is an h, h dash is an h, h is a subgroup. So by closure property this element has to be in h. So x will lie in bh and therefore ah therefore ah is a subset of bh and if you make use of equation 2 you can also prove that bh will be a subset of ah so that little bit i'm leaving as an exercise so it will follow that ah is the same as bh and now let's quickly prove the converse So for the converse, let us assume that AH is the same as BH. So these two left cosets are equal. But again by theorem 2, I know that A belongs to its own coset. And now this is the same as BH. So A will belong to BH. And therefore, the result works. In fact, some of you may have guessed or some of you may be getting that deja vu kind of a feeling that you have seen these properties before, these kind of properties before. Uh, well, uh, let me nudge your memory. You may have seen such properties for equivalence classes. So just hold that thought. Uh, in the next couple of lectures, I will elaborate more on this. That's all for now. In the next lecture, we will look at some more properties of cosets. Thank you.